Lord. Well, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Thank you, welcome, praise to the, the Lord. welcome to the oh, Wednesday night way. cutting it right Bible study. And we are here and we are about to get into uh, the Word of God. We cannot live without the Word of God. I don't know if you found that out yet. I know you have. I don't know if you found it out yet that you cannot live without the Word of God. Amen. Cannot live without the Word of God. We need the Word of God in our lives. We need the Word of God. And tonight, well, on tonight, we're going to find out the things that the Christian, the things that the Christian needs to do in order to make sure that they have a life that God is pleased with. And that's what we want. We want to make sure that we're living a life that God is pleased with. Okay? We want to make sure of that at all costs. We're going to pray and we're going to turn our music down and we're going to get right into the Word of God. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Lord, we bless your name. We thank you, Lord, for your presence in your house, Lord. And we thank you that for these next few moments, Lord, uh, we, you will be with us, Lord Jesus. We pray that your presence might go with us, Lord Jesus. Father, we we ask all those who are listening right now, Lord, I pray that they will tune in and hear a word that will touch their hearts and touch their lives, Lord Jesus. Lord, we know there are many who are not living for you, Lord Jesus. We know there are many who are. But Lord, we pray that somehow this word tonight might bring those who don't know you closer to you. And Lord, those who know you, uh, Lord, I pray you might strengthen them through these words. Lord, have your way. Bless us together in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. And amen. amen. Well, we want to once again welcome you to the Wednesday night Cutting It Right Bible study. And if you're watching on Facebook right now, we ask you if you would share this page with someone so someone else can be blessed. That's what we want. We want someone else to be blessed. Uh, and we're sure that the Lord will bless you. We need we need a word in due season. We pray that this will uh, be that word. Also, if you're watching on YouTube, uh, we are right there right now streaming live on our YouTube channel and also live as a podcast on Spreaker.com. That's S-P-I always spell it because people don't know whether it's Speaker or Spreaker. So I always spell it. It's S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R, Spreaker.com. Amen. So once again, Share this page with someone if you're on Facebook. Let someone know that we are here and we are on the air with a word that we pray, with a Bible study rather that we pray that will uh, uplift you and, and teach you some things about the Lord tonight. We all want to grow in the grace and knowledge of the Lord. Amen. We've been talking in past weeks, we've been talking about the fact that uh, for people who doubt their salvation, and we know that there are reasons why people doubt their salvation, even solid Christians when I say solid, I mean people that should rest assured that they're good. People that should say, I know I'm saved, I'm born again. But yet and still, for some reason or another, they doubt their salvation. And one of the things that causes Christians to doubt their salvation is sin. Sin is the bringer down of everything and everyone. Sin will cause you to question everything about yourself. Sin. And so we know that that's one of the reasons. We also know that the devil brings condemnation. When sin happens, condemnation comes. And he tries to tell you, you're not saved. Look at you. Look, how could you live that way? How could you call yourself a Christian? And all these things happen when the enemy, when we entertain the devil's yes. condemnation. We must understand what scripture says. That there is therefore now no, no condemnation. condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Amen. So we want to make sure that we fall in line and make sure, listen, don't doubt your salvation. Don't give the devil uh, a foothold in your life. Don't give him a chance to get in. Now on tonight, we, we were talking past weeks also, we brought up biblical convictions. And I wanted to expand on this, on this idea or, or on this topic of, Biblical convictions, the Christian and biblical convictions. And by biblical convictions, I mean those things that the child of God has already pretty much cemented, nailed down, and they call them absolutes. Things that they know are right and things that they know are wrong. Um, in, spite, in spite of the differences in denominations that 
abound, different denominations. There still should be certain Christian distinctives, I'm going to call it, certain Christian distinctives that we should hold true. Number one, number one, and we're not going to talk about each one yet, but that there's a small list of things that the Christian should not waver on, that they should be absolute when it comes to these things. Number one, your personal walk with the Lord, your personal walk with the Lord is so very important. Your walk with the Lord. Second, you have your purity. The Lord wants us to remain pure. And I, that's not just speaking about things having to do with a sexual nature. Purity has to do within. W within. It's not always sexual when we're talking about purity, but that also has something to do with it. Your purpose. You can never waver on your purpose. You are responsible to know who you are in the Lord. Okay, You are responsible to know what God has called you to and what he wants you to be and do in this world. You are not, as a Christian, he did not call you to go to church on Sunday, sit down, listen for an hour or two, pray, and then go home, live your life, come back and do it again the next week. That's not the sum total of what God has called you to do in your life. That's not your calling. You're just living if that's what you're doing. He has a specific thing no, that he wants you to I do. No, I wouldn't call it living. You are just existing. Okay, you are existing. And what I like to say, you're just breathing. All right? You, you're, you're, you're existing. Just, Let's you're, just keep it. Okay, okay, you're just existing. You're okay, just existing. Because without Christ, you're not living. Yes, yes. So. There's, there's more that he has for us to do. There's more that he wants us to be. So never waver on your purpose. Uh, your praise. Your praise. Praise... Praise is one of those things that's very difficult to do at difficult times. When different situations come up in our life, I'm quite sure during the difficult seasons that you've had personally and individually and that we have had as a family, I am sure, I am sure that the very first, first notion that came to your mind, it might have been second, it might have been third, but I'm sure that maybe not the very first inclination when something bad happens that you said, oh, hallelujah, praise the Lord. I didn't it's, it's say not the, I, I, I don't, I can't, I can't speak for anyone else. Well, no, okay, I can't speak but, for anyone else either. Um, but like I said, it's, uh, it's personal. And when I was, when I was told of um, something that happened, the first thing I did was praise God. Okay. That well. was my that was my very first thing to do. I just raised my hand, even though it hurt. I was I was in pain, and but yet, um, I had the peace of God. Well, that's good. That's good. I know, I know that in the difficult times that I have had in my life, uh, it, it it just wasn't the very first notion. I'm aware of it. I know it. But my mind is still sifting things out like, wow, oh my goodness, I can't believe it. What just happened? What's going on? And my mind is not immediately wrapped up in, I'm just going to praise you. It comes. I don't know. It comes <laughs> kind of quick. It comes soon, but it's just not the first reflex. And maybe that's, maybe that's a problem on me that it's not the very first reflex that happens. Praise in spite of ourselves, praise needs to be the first reflex. It needs to it needs to be the first response. Yes, we're human. Yes, we are all in different places spiritually in our life. But as Christians, I do believe that Christian should be the very first reflex quote action that happens when something bad happens. When something good happens, mm -hmm. something good happens, and, and you're you you're expected to praise God when something good happens. But when something bad happens. It's just it, yeah, it, but see the thing is that it, I don't understand. We sing the song, you praise him in the good time and in the good time, praise him in the bad time, do the same. Yeah, it yeah. sounds good in the song, well, no, but when but, it happens for real, yeah. But you need to know if you have that relationship with God, you're gonna have to be able to stand and praise him no matter of what. Of course, of course. And 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 when you look back and you see, you know how how you responded in different situations. Listen, different situations. 
catch us at different points in our life. When things happen, we are not always in the same place spiritually. This, this unfortunately, is the Christian life for mostly everyone. Mostly everyone. You know, there, there's, you know, it's good, we're good. But there's, we there's, there's uh, the, the, the mountains and the, the valleys. The, here we are. Yeah, going up the valley. Yeah. And, 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 and if one of those situations that need a praise, even though we don't understand it happens, what if it finds us right here? And something happens. You gotta praise him. We, 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 we gotta praise him. You gotta praise him in the you good time as well as the bad time. Gotta praise And him. then not only that, you know, you were just giving an illustration about the mountain, but many people only praise him on the mountain top. They don't praise him in the valley. Well, see, so see, it's very, it's very easy. It's very easy to praise God when everything is going well. It's very easy to praise God when, when all your bills are paid and and. And you got a job making good money, and 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 everybody is treating you well. It, it it's very, it's very easy to praise God. But when everything seems, at least to your natural eyes, when everything seems negative, when it seems like everything is coming against you, now say, Lord, I praise you. You who, have to. Who wants to praise God? Who wants to praise God? When they just lost their job, who wants to pray? Who wants to praise God when a loved one just passed away? Who who wants to praise God? I, I'm I'm just I'm just being devil's advocate. I'm just throwing out situations. It's what we are called to do. He wants us to praise Him, but it doesn't always come easy. And sometimes you have to praise God through tears. Yes. Through gritted teeth, yes. Through clenched fists, That's you have right. to praise God. No matter sometimes. what, no matter you gotta what, gotta do it. You gotta do it. So once again, these are things that the Lord, as as His people, we need to have the biblical conviction that no matter what happens, my job is to praise God. I don't know how I'm going to do it. I gotta praise God. I should praise God. Okay. Uh, we should never. Also, we should never. We should never back away from, uh, we talked about a little bit, but we talked about our purpose, but our place in the kingdom. God has given you a place in the kingdom. Never turn your back on what God has no, specifically called no, you out no. to do. Never do that. Okay. Let, let, let's go. Let's talk. Let's talk about uh, this thing called biblical convictions. And let me bring you a scripture verse that I believe uh, refers to. To biblical convictions, and that's in uh, Romans chapter fourteen. Romans chapter fourteen, and verse number five. Romans chapter fourteen, and verse number five. All right, and that says, "One man esteemeth the day above another; another esteemeth every day alike." Now, here's here, here's where we are talking about biblical convictions. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. Every person. You're reading the New King James. What does your New King James say right there? One person esteems one day above another. Another esteem every day alike. Let each be fully convinced uh -huh. in his own mind. There you go. Fully convinced, fully persuaded. Totally, totally convinced and persuaded that a thing is right or wrong. That's having biblical convictions you are fully persuaded fully persuaded that this thing that you do or you don't do that you know that it is right we used the example last week we used the example of daniel in daniel chapter one i believe it's verse 18 where he talks about the fact that uh the bible says that daniel purposed in his heart yes, he that would. he would not sin so once again that Having that purposeful mind, uh, determining, making a making a firm determination in your mind that he would not do a thing, that is having the biblical conviction that you will not do something. So it's very important as a Christian that you have biblical convictions. Amen. You need to have biblical convictions. Uh, so coming from that verse in Romans 14, 5, I come up with several things. That we need to be fully persuaded of. Several things. And we're going to spend the next few minutes talking about these several things that we need to be fully persuaded of. In other words, 
have a firm belief, a biblical conviction that this is what is needed. This is who I am. This is what I do. We need to be fully persuaded. And I added the word committed. We need to be fully persuaded and committed to follow hard. Now, if you're not sure what that phrase follow hard means, go to Psalm 63. Psalm 63 and verse number 8. Psalm 63 and verse number 8. And this is the psalmist speaking. I always say the psalmist because all of the psalms were not written by David. And well, you have David to look. David wrote this one. David wrote this one. This is a psalm of David. Yes. And Psalm 63 and verse 8. Why don't you read that? My soul follows close behind you. Your right hand upholds me. So you understand the idea. And King James Version says, follow hard. My soul follows hard after you. Here... In the New King James, it follows close. So to follow hard means to stay close by, not to let someone go, to, to remain close, knitted to someone. That's what it is. And we need to be fully persuaded and committed to follow hard. We need to be fully persuaded as Christians that we will commit ourselves to stay as close as possible to the Lord as we can. Amen. I want to be close to the Lord. I know that there are things that will take me away from him. I know we would like to think, we would like to think that we are conscious of our own weaknesses. Sometimes we, we're, we're not, but we would like to think that we know our weaknesses, but we know that those weaknesses are the things that will Pull, pull us, us away. away. Our desire as Christians, and we need to be fully persuaded and have a firm conviction that, Lord, no matter what. So that means no compromising. No, we cannot compromise. That's on right. Our whole, our whole mindset should be, Lord, I want to stay close. I want to stay close. And it's not done. And we'll get into this in the weeks to come. And we're really going to get into a, a teaching concerning uh, how we go really really the way that we need to stay close but we need to not simply rely on works and i'm, I'm gonna leave it right there we, we, we don't need to just rely simply on works there's a mindset there's a way that we go about staying close to the lord keeping our eyes on right. jesus what does the song say? Keep, turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look, look full, full in his wonderful, wonderful face. face. And in then the, the things of earth will go strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. That's what can happen when we decide and commit ourselves to stay close to the Lord. In your walk, we need to stay close in our walk with the Lord. And when we talk about our walk, we're talking about our daily life. Yes. The daily decisions that we make every day, every day you decide whether you are going to trust God or not. Every day you decide whether you're going to serve God or not. I know we're Christians, but the Christian has to decide whether he is going to serve God that day. Is it a choice? It is. It is, it is I, a, I would. I wouldn't even say well, here, you decide. Well, no, here, there's no decision. Here, here. Here's you, why I would call it a. Here's why I would call it a choice. Here's why I would call it a choice. All right. No, oh, I decide to breathe today. Come no, on. no, 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 no. Listen, being a Christian is automatic. Once His Spirit is in us, we want to serve God. Well, that's what I'm saying. It's, All right. We want. I want to. I wake up in the morning, and I want to serve God. That's right. However, however. Even though when I got saved, I was sanctified. Remember? Set apart. Set apart. At the moment I got saved, I became sanctified. I cannot become unsanctified. I'm sanctified. I'm set apart at the moment of salvation. Now, that's my position. That's who I am. I am sanctified. If anybody asks you, are you sanctified? You tell them yes. Okay? That's just... The fact that I'm justified, I've been made righteous by the blood of God, by the blood of Christ. But now, on a daily basis now, 
See, sanctification has two sides. I'm automatically sanctified when I get saved, and that doesn't change. But now, every day, my condition has to rise to my position. My position is I'm sanctified. But now I have to live sanctified. And my living sanctified living sanctified has to do with the choices that I make every day. Yeah, the choices that but you have You to. are going to make choices. You are not going to do the right thing every day. You're not going to be without sin in this life. You're going to do the wrong thing sometimes. Sometimes you're going to do the wrong thing, say the wrong thing, go to the wrong place on purpose. But as a Christian, you are still sanctified positionally. But now your condition and every day you are trying to bring your condition up to your position. position. Okay. So I'm sanctified, but now I'm striving to be sanctified. We are okay, striving to be. But could you use a? Could I use um, Romans twelve two? Look at Romans twelve two, and see will that correlate with that what you just said? Romans chapter 12 oh, and verse number 2. Yeah, because it says and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. This is this is the part, part of the process of Daily sanctification. He asks us to be renewed yes. in our mind. Do not be conformed to this world. Don't get latched up, hooked on. Don't allow the world to fit you into its mold. That's part of the daily sanctification that we must do. That's what I say when we have to choose to serve God. I don't mean that today I'm going to say, okay, today I'm not going to be a Christian. Today I'm not going to live like a Christian. Today I'm going to do my own thing. That, that's not really no, what I mean that. when I say we have to choose to serve God. No, that's what why I, I, said I, I need you to clarify. You have to choose it. to do. Every day you are going to choose whether you're going to sin or not. That's what I mean by, by serving. Every day you're going to choose. Every sin that is committed is a choice. Every time you say something wrong, you did it. You can't blame anybody else. It doesn't matter who seemingly provoked you? It doesn't matter if it was their fault. If you, if they wouldn't have done that, then you wouldn't have said that or done that. No. all that. You did what you did. What you did is on you. And God, when 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 He calls us out, <coughs> excuse me, when He calls us out, He's not going to say shame on y'all because you made my child sin. So you're going to get in trouble. Yeah. You have to ask God to forgive you for provoking them to sin. They're clean. No, no. I, if, if something that somebody did. Caused me to sin. You sinned. I sinned. And I have to make it right with God. Okay? So this is what I meant by we have to choose. Every day we're going to make choices. Every single day. And no one is exempt. We all have to make choices. So we need to be fully persuaded that we're going to stay close when it pertains to our daily walk with the Lord. How we carry ourselves. How we look to the world. What does the world see when they see? And what does the world, what do the people that I work with, ride the bus and train with, that I go to the store with, that I go to school with, what do these people see in me? Not that we're trying to please people, but do what do they see when they see me? One of them. Do I come off as just being one of the guys, one of the girls, just like everybody else? Or is there something distinct something different. about me? Something, something different. different. There needs to be something different about the Christian. Okay, there needs to be something different about the Christian. We need to, quote, stand out. We need to stand out. The Bible says we are lights. We need yeah, to stand out. To it doesn't mean that you have to go around. I was on the bus today. I was on a bus today. And... <laughs> Gentleman, out of, out of nowhere, just sitting on the bus. And you wouldn't think that he would start up, but he was just sitting over there on, on the left of me. And he just started talking. The bus wasn't that crowded yet, but he said, praise the Lord. God loves you. 
You know, for God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Listen, Jesus is coming back. The rapture is coming. I don't know how to tell you, but the rapture is coming. You got to believe it. If you don't, if you don't get yourself ready, well, I don't know what to tell you. Anyway, God bless you. Have a good day. And he stayed on the bus. He didn't say that as he was getting off. He stayed on the bus for another 15, 20 minutes. I, 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 you know, out of, out of nowhere, what do people see when, I mean, when he, he if, it, if that's how he is, now that he has exposed himself as that type of person who would say something like that, everything he does now is in the spotlight. Of course. If I see this guy on the street now and he has a beer and a cigarette in his hand, I'm gonna say you're gonna question. I'm him? gonna say that was I. Well, I, you know, I heard what you said on the bus. You was off point, and now I see you with a brew and a and a and a cigarette. It doesn't go together. So once we put ourselves out there, how do we? How does? How do our peers see us? Not that everybody has to do what he did. Not that everybody needs to do what he did. But how do our peers look at us? We need to have a firm conviction. That we are going to walk in a way that pleases God. And let me add, not walk in a way that pleases man. No. We're not put here to please no. people. No. It, it, no. it would be nice if we could make everybody happy. No, but we can't. But we, we, we're not here to do that. Here's the second thing we need to be fully persuaded and have this firm biblical conviction about. We need to be fully persuaded and committed. And follow hard, stay close, when, when it comes to our talk, the things that we say, the things that we say. Is it in the book of James? Uh, I believe it's in the book of James, and I believe it's in the, probably chapter 2 or 3, where he talks about the tongue. Where oh, the tongue, the tongue, yes. the Bible says, is a, the tongue is an unruly, yeah, unruly, an unruly evil set on fire of hell. You cannot tame it. I believe, be tamed. I believe it is in chapter 4. Is it chapter 4? Um, let me find this. Uh, chapter 2. Yeah, keep going. Chapter 5. Chapter 3. Yeah, okay. Chapter 3. Uh, James chapter 3. My brother, be not many masters, knowing that we are we shall receive the greater condemnation. For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man yes. and able to bridle the whole body. Behold, we put bits in the horse's mouths that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body. Behold also the ships, with though they be so great and are driven of fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a very small helm, whithersoever the governor uh, desires or listens. Even so, verse the 5, tongue. the tongue is a little member and boasts great things. Behold how great a matter a little fire kindleth. Look at verse 6. And the tongue like is a tongue. fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members that it defileth the whole body and setteth on fire the course of nature and is set on fire of hell. It's verse number set eight. On fire by hell. By hell. Of hell. Verse number eight. But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil, full oh, of deadly. deadly poison. I got to go to verse nine. Therewith bless we God, even the Father, and therewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude or image of God. Out of the same mouth proceeds blessing and cursing. My brothers, these things ought not to. So to be. And that's all talking about the tongue. In other words, the words that we speak. We need to have a firm conviction that we will not offend with our tongue. We will not offend anybody with our mouth. <laughs> it's just How difficult is that? Very How difficult. difficult is this? Okay. But once again, as children of God, it's what we are called to he wants us to bridle the oh, tongue. Sorry. Yes. Anytime that you have an opportunity to say something, doesn't mean that you have to seize the opportunity to say something. 
the Lord does not always want us to speak because sometimes when we speak, it is just that. It is us speaking and we it's don't men, allow men. the spirit of God right. to speak through us. And when we go away from the word of God, from the spirit of God, and we put self and flesh into it, what comes out is usually not going to be nice nice or the right thing. <laughs> and so we need to be fully persuaded and committed to follow close when it comes to our talk. Go to Ephesians chapter 4. I want you to read Ephesians chapter 4 and verse number 29. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse number 29. Let's see what that says. Ephesians 4 and verse 29. We want to thank you once again for, for watching and joining us. Uh, once again, if you're watching us on Facebook, why don't you share this page uh, with someone, let someone know that we are here having a rollicking time in this Bible <laughs> study tonight. A blessed time. Uh, Ephesians chapter 4, verse number 29. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. That is, that is not just... That is not just talking about filthy words. The Bible talks about filthy communication out of your mouth in another place here in the New Testament that Paul speaks. Filthy communication out of your mouth is one of the things that we have to put aside as Christians. Uh, but one of the things that this verse is also talking about corrupt communication is lie not one to another. He says this later on in just a few verses. Don't lie to one another. Don't lie to one another. We have to be very careful. Listen, that we don't smudge the truth that we don't pull away from the truth because a half truth is a whole lie. That's right. Half a truth is a whole lie. I remember when I was young. I remember when I was younger. Younger. <laughs> yeah. I remember when I was younger that I would neglect, purposely neglect to tell the whole truth. The whole truth. Leave little pieces bits and, out. Bits and pieces. That Make it all sound all right. That put me in a good light by leaving out certain parts of the story and go away feeling, you know, because you know. It, it, but still, when you do that, you lie. You're, you're lying. You're, you're lying. Yeah. So we we need to make sure. Listen, listen. We need to be fully persuaded that Lord. I'm going to bless you with my words. Not only am I going to praise you, as we were talking about, not only am I going to praise you when it gets difficult, in my everyday communication with other people, I'm going to let my, here's what scripture says also, I'm going to let my speech be seasoned with, with salt. salt. Seasoned with salt. That it may be a benefit for the people who hear. It's not something that's easy. It's not something that's easy. Have you ever, have you ever had that prompting? Have you ever felt, and I'm not talking about a prompting from the Spirit of God. Have you ever felt within yourself something that you want to say? Yeah, something you, that you just want to get you off your chest. And you, you just want to tell them off. You just want to give them a piece of your mind, a piece of your heart. You just want to give them a piece of whatever. whatever. And and but then you you sense that check from the Holy Ghost saying, "No. Don't do don't don't say that. Don't say that. Don't say that." And there have been times that you've heard that don't say that. And you still said that. Mm. You still went ahead and said and did what the Holy Ghost said. Don't say that. And you still did it. When we do that, it's called grieving the Holy, the Holy Spirit. Spirit. In other words, we make the Holy Spirit, we bring the Holy Spirit yeah, to 30. a state of sadness when we do this. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit there you go. by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. That's right. So we grieve. We cause the Holy Spirit sadness when we turn around and disobey what he has told us not to do. Okay, so we must must make sure that we stay on line, aligned uh, with the Spirit of God as he speaks to us. 
Here's the third thing that we need to be fully persuaded of. Fully persuaded. We need to be fully persuaded and committed to follow hard, staying close, when it comes to my thoughts. It's one thing to talk. It's one thing to talk and say what you're not supposed to say. But it's another thing to think the very same thing that you know that you shouldn't say, but it's all In in your mind. There's something about the mind. Here's what the Bible says. The Bible says, Thou wilt keep keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. So, if we keep our minds stayed, kept, hard, close to him, we will do better when it comes to our thoughts. Our thought life. Our thought life. Go to Psalm, Psalm 10. Let's see if this is a a Davidic psalm or a psalm written by someone else. Psalm Psalm 10 10 and verse 5, if you will read that when you get it. Psalm 10 and verse number 5. His ways are always prospering. Your judgments are far above. Out of his sight, as for all his enemies... He sneers at them. That's a good verse, but I meant verse four. I didn't tell you that. Mm-hmm. This is verse number four. The wicked in his proud countenance does not seek God. God is in none of his thoughts. His thoughts. Do you, as a Christian, let me ask you a question. As a Christian, do you think about God every day? Every day. Every day. You think about God every day. Every Every day, God is in your thoughts. Every day. He's in your thoughts every day. Every day. From the point that you wake up, how long before you get up is the Lord a part of your thought life? Is it when you first wake up, he's he's, he's, he's already in your your thoughts? Uh, Yes, I would say yes. I have to. When you... Or walking down the street, is the Lord in your thoughts? Mm, yes, I would have to say so. <laughs> when, when you are on the job, doing whatever, whatever you do at the job, is the Lord in your thoughts? Yes. As you travel on the bus and the subway, is the Lord in your thoughts? Yes. So you see, what I'm trying to say is that the Bible says that for those who don't know the Lord, the Lord foolish. is the <laughs> Lord is not really in the, the Lord is not the, the, their mind is consumed with so many other things. And as Christians, we have to make sure that we don't get our minds so convoluted with everything else, whatever everything else is, that we don't think about the Lord. We need to have our thoughts stayed upon the Lord. Yes. It brings peace. Yes, that's what we spoke about. Yes. There's an old song. There's an old song. Uh, Andre Crouch. I love Andre Crouch. There's an old song. It says, I will will keep keep you you in perfect perfect peace. peace. If you keep your mind stayed on me. That's what Jesus said. The peace that I give you is not the peace that the world gives. It's a peace... That passes all All understanding. understanding. God is our, as you well know, he is our our He is our Jehovah Shalom. He's our Jehovah Shalom. Yes, he he is. He gives us peace. Peace He gives us peace in the midst of darkness. He he gives us peace in the midst of the storm. He gives us peace wherever we are. But we have to do our part by keeping our mind stayed, fixed, focused on him and him alone uh, completely. Go to Philippians. There's a challenge. There's a challenge here. Philippians chapter 4. There's a there's a challenge for every child of God who wants, yeah, who wants to live for him, who is striving to live for him. There is a challenge in this world that is that is being run. 
by the prince of darkness, Satan. I didn't say he's in control of everything, but this world, the Bible says that he is the prince of this world. He is the prince of those who, uh, who do not serve the Lord. The challenge is to keep our minds Stay stayed on, on him. him. And here is part of the blueprint in, in Philippians, 4. Philippians 4, 8. Let me, let me read what it says in Philippians 4 and verse 8. He says, finally, brothers, what, whatever, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, Whatsoever things are of good report, it says here, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. You want to know what to think about? This is what we should be thinking about. Oh, I know it's not easy. No, it's not easy. I can't just tell you, okay, go home. I want you to sit down and think about things like that. With all that we're surrounded by. TV, radio, music, entertainment, television, all media is going against everything in that verse. Yes. Everything that is in the world. But the next verse really tells you what to do. Go ahead, keep reading. Those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do. And the God of peace shall be with you. So you, it's a combination. You, you you keep your mind on these things by keeping in your heart the things that you've learned, <laughs> the things that you've received, and the thing you've heard and, and, and that you've seen lived out in the lives of other committed Christians. Yes. That's what we need to do. That's what we need to do. This is not difficult. And it, it, and it is a challenge in this day and age, in this world, that we live for the Lord in such a way. We need to please the Lord by Lord. Take my life. Take my thoughts. Lord, you be in my thoughts. I want to think about pure things. I want to think about righteous things. I want to think about true things. I want to think about things that are praiseworthy. I want to think about things that are virtuous. Th these are the things I want to have my mind dwelled upon and I know that you will keep me in the peace, peace that passes all understanding. And I, I've said this before. The, the greatest time, there have been two times in my life, two times in my life, where I was, where I felt an over overwhelming sense of the peace of God that passes all understanding. At least for me, I did not understand and I could not explain it. Twice. Not that peace is not an ongoing thing, but twice I was very aware that I had God's peace. That was when I got saved. When I knew that something had transpired in me. Something spiritual took place and changed me. There was a there was a peace that washed over me. There was like, I was just like, just washed out. I was like, oh, I was so clean. I was so empty of myself and I, I had peace. And the second time was after Karis had passed away. When I was uh, sitting in the car, when you... I wasn't there. You were in the car. You went out to buy her dress. Oh, I. Okay. And we were on Flatbush. We were in your brother's car, and I was sitting in the back seat. Bright, sunshiny day. Brightest day that I've ever seen in a long time. Bright sun. Blue sky. And I was sitting in the back seat, watching people walk up and down Flatbush Avenue and doing their thing on a Saturday. And I was sitting in the back of the car in the darkest place that I can remember being. I'm dark. Dark. It was just spiritually, emotionally. I was just down dark and all of a sudden as I was there I, I saw black I literally saw black even though it was sunny outside it just a like the weight lift like, like, it was just like a piece it was mm -hmm. just like it was just like a piece just came over me because I was at the bottom I was at my bottom and and those are the two times that I that I re actually recall just feeling 
peace. Such a peace. A peace that I cannot really you can explain, understand. It. And you cannot explain and it. And this is the type of peace that the Lord gives us when our minds are focused on Him. I have to tell you, at that point in time, my mind was, I wasn't thinking about the Lord at that time. But it was just, I was at such a place in my life at that moment that there was no further down I could get. And the Lord had to reach down and say, peace. And I, and I, and I was, he, he pulled me up. He pulled me up. And, and that's, listen, that's what God can do. That's what God, uh, through the Spirit of God, can do uh, in your life. Just a couple more. Uh, just a couple more. Uh, we need to be fully persuaded. We need to be fully persuaded and committed to follow close when it comes to my study. My study. And I'm talking about the Word of God. You're saying study to show thyself a Well, we need to yes. study. Yes. And, and, and listen, I say in my study, but I need to tell you the full understanding of that word study. That word study does not have the meaning that we all think it has. That word study in that verse does not mean study as we know to study. That's not what the meaning of the word study in that verse means. The word study in that verse simply means we need to make sure of it. We need to make sure that we show ourselves approved unto God. We use the word study because that was an old English word. Study means to be sure of, to make sure of. But we need to study to make sure to show ourselves approved unto God. A better verse, what we're talking about here, uh, Psalm 119, 105. Yes. That's Thy what word is a lamp unto, is a lamp unto, unto my feet, feet and, and a, a light, light unto, unto my, my path. path. There's another one, I believe it's in Psalm 19. or, or I believe it's Psalm 19. 19. The law of the Lord is, is perfect, perfect. Converting, converting the, soul. the soul. The testimony the of the Lord of is sure. sure. Making wise the simple. simple. Make them, yes. That, that is what we, we need to come to the conclusion. We need to come to the conclusion that I am going to, and using that word study, that I am going to make it my life's aim to know, to learn, to understand as much as the word as I can. We are not going to come to a place where I say, you know what? I've read the whole Bible. And I understand the whole thing. No, you That's don't. never going to happen. That's never going to no, happen. Because but we need to commit ourselves to say, Lord, I want you to speak to me through this word. Remember years ago when I really began undertaking learning the word of God. It was at a difficult time in my life. I had lost my job. Things weren't going well personally for me. Personally. But I said, you know what? In this time that I'm not working, I'm going to study the Word. I had backslidden. When I came back, I came back, quote, with a vengeance. I said, I'm going to study the Word of God. And you remember those days I used to stay up all night reading the Word? Remember, remember, yes, remember? you delved yourself in the uh, Word. Yeah, the, 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 all night, all night, reading, studying, highlighting, writing notes and everything. That, that's, that's what I really began studying the Word of God. And we need to commit ourselves. Say, Lord, Lord, I'm going to study your word. It doesn't mean that you're going to be a teacher. It doesn't mean you're going to be a preacher. It doesn't, it doesn't mean that sir, that's, that's what's going to happen. But you need to study. Read the word of God. Not just for devotion, which is good. But you need to read it to know, to learn, to understand. Grow in the grace of and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We need to grow. We need to grow. Amen? Amen. We need to grow. That's what we need to do. We need to do. We need to do that. One more before we close out on tonight. We need to finally be need to be fully persuaded and committed to follow the Lord close when it comes to my praying. My praying. This is something that is not, uh, once again, this is something that we all need improvement upon. Yes. We all need to pray more. Someone may be 
strong when it comes to reading their word and another may be strong when it comes to telling other people about Jesus and someone else may be strong and when it comes to prayer. The complete Christian is one who is able to bring them all together. together as one. If I if, if, if I read the word hungrily, but I don't pray, I'm incomplete. Yes. If I pray without ceasing, but I never crack open the word of God, I'm incomplete. So one does not go without the other. We need to be praying people. Go to first first Thessalonians chapter five. First Thessalonians chapter five. And read verse 16, 17, and 18. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 16, 17, Ready? and 18. Yes. Okay. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit. We continue? Yeah, you can stop right there. That's yeah. good. Okay. And that pretty much that pretty much speaks about pretty much everything that we spoke about tonight. We talked earlier about praise. It says rejoice evermore. Talk about pray without ceasing, ceasing. In everything, with prayer thanksgiving. With everything, give thanks to God. Yes. For give this thanks. is the will of, of God, God in Christ, Christ Jesus, Jesus concerning you. What's the will of God? To pray always, to give thanks. To rejoice evermore. This is the will of God. This is what he wants us to do. We should always be in an attitude of prayer. Attitude of prayer. Pray. When someone asks us to pray, many times we shrink back. Oh, I don't want to pray. Oh, no, I don't always pray. be ready. We should always be ready. What does the Bible say? In season, season and, out of, and season. out of season. Pretty much, that simply means whether you feel like it whether or you not. You must be you must be in a position to do it, whatever you're called upon to do it. Listen, we need to have these biblical convictions. They are for us. The Lord wants us. The Lord wants us to serve Him in a way that pleases Him. him. So our personal walk, repeat as we started tonight, our personal walk, our purity, our purpose, which we'll get into in the weeks to come, our, our praise and our attitude, our place in the kingdom, uh, and our, even in our preaching for those for those who uh, for those who preach and teach the word, we, we need to make sure that we do not hold anything back. We need to speak that which the Lord has given us to speak. Amen. 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 We, we we can't hold back because if we if we don't say what the Lord has given us to say, we'll be held we're going to be held accountable, and it's going to be woe is me. That's right. Woe is me. And if I don't if I don't teach and preach that which the Lord has given it to me, the way He has given it to me, then He is going to deal with me. He's going to deal with me. So I need to be in a place where. I'm hearing the Lord and I make sure as a preacher or teacher that I'm giving the people what the Lord has spoken to me. What's the matter? You don't want to um, tickle their ears? No, I'm not. I don't want to tickle anybody's ears. Are you going to make them feel comfortable? I'm not in the business of trying to make people feel comfortable. No. Okay, so you are you are here to do God's work and that is to preach the word. Got to speak it the way he gives it and uh, sometimes, sometimes... Fortunate or unfortunate, uh, sometimes the word hurts. It hurts. It hurts the speaker. Sometimes it hurts to us who, who speak it. But he tells us to speak it. That's right. Sometimes the word comes down hard on toes. Sometimes, sometimes the word is like a hammer. It's supposed to. Sometimes it's like an anvil, and and, and sometimes it's like a fire. Uh, listen, the word is going to do what it does, but we have to be. Committed to transmitting the word as he gives it to us. Don't try to make people feel good. No. And, and you don't want people to be mad at you, so I'm not going to say that. And we, no, we have to it speak doesn't matter. What you're the not, Lord has given worried. us to speak. You're not there to please men, you're there to please God. And, and let, let, let the chips, let the word fall where it may. 
Amen. Thank you for changing that. Amen. Let the words fall where they may. Amen. Amen. Well, we want to uh, thank you. Once again, we come to you on these Wednesday nights with the Wednesday night Cutting It Right Bible study. We come to you with the word of God that we know is able to save uh, your souls. We pray that this word tonight has been instrumental in, in lifting you up. We pray that you have learned something that you didn't know before. Uh, it is always God's will that we get ourselves into the word of God. It's always Amen. God's will. It's what God wants for us. We're here on these Wednesday nights uh, starting at 830. And we pray that once again, you'll let someone know, share this page with someone, let them know that Pastor Michael Jakes, Pastor Edie Jakes, that we're here uh, with a word, uh, with a study that we ple- that we believe will be edifying uh, for your life. Uh, we come to you on Facebook, come to you on YouTube, and we come to you on Spreaker.com. You can find all you can find all of our podcasts. You can find them once again on YouTube on our YouTube channel. You can go right over to our YouTube channel and you can subscribe to the channel. And anytime that we upload anything, you'll be first to see it. Uh, you can also go over to Spreaker.com and you can also see all of our podcasts. Uh, that we have made available uh, to uplift and edify those who are in the kingdom. We want the body to be blessed by the word of God. That's what we're here for. That's what the Lord has called us to do, to to teach and preach the word of God with compassion and uh, reality. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, we're going to close and we're going to, Ask the Lord to be with us. Lord, I pray that you will continue to be with those who have been listening and watching on tonight. Lord, I pray you might bless them and keep them. Lord, I pray that this word might continually be in their hearts. Lord, bless us. Help us to have the convictions that you want us to have, Lord Jesus. Bless us and keep us. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, this is Pastor Michael Jakes and... Oh, you want to say my name? You do have one, right? Pastor E.D. Jakes. This is Pastor Michael Jakes and Pastor E.D. Jakes and... God willing, we'll come to you next week at the same time with another word, another Bible study from the Word of God. Amen. Until then, have a good night and may God bless you. Amen.